Hello everybody, Devanella here, and today's video is going to be something that was a bit unexpected. Why do I say that? Well, when I first had the idea for this video, I was looking to explain why silk wings and hive wings don't make any sense. But during the research phase, I ended up debunking my own findings, so now this video will be about explaining how clear sight actually successfully caused a split in the beetle wings to create the hive wings and silk wings. I quickly want to make an apology, I originally wanted to put a lot more effort into this video, but with all the corrections I made to my information, I ended up rushing to complete this one instead. So the first thing I want to do before we get into the confusing science and maths, is establish a timeline for the hive wings creation. This will be important in helping us figure things out. Clearsight arrived in Pantella roughly in the year 3012 AS, or 3013 AS. During her arrival, Leafwings were the dominant tribe and resided alongside the Beetlewings. Back in that time, Beetlewings lived in different groups dotted around Pantala, but were all still classified as the same tribe. This is similar to what the modern Leafwings did, living in two separate groups of Poisonwings and Sapwings, but still all being Leafwings. During Clearsight's life, she married multiple husbands, the first and only known one being Sunstreak. With these husbands, she had many dragonettes. The four she supposedly had with Sunstreet were named Commodore, Jewel, Orange, and Tortoiseshell. She also wrote all of her visions in a book that would later become known as the Book of Clearsight. The visions in her book lasted about 900 years, dating the last vision anywhere between 3912 AS to 4000 AS. The next point in the timeline is when the Beetle Wings officially split into two tribes the descendants of Clearsight becoming the Hive Wings, and the descendants of Pure Beetle Wings becoming the Silk Wings. This happened roughly around the year 4500 AS, just over 500 years before present day, which is 5012 AS. This next piece of information is necessary to the timeline, however, there is no rough date stated for when this happened, only that it must have been after the split. Scarab states that her great-great-grandmother was the one who started enforcing the rule that Hivewings and Silkwings can no longer breed together, which is why relationships between the two tribes are referred to as forbidden romances. The best dates I can give for this are anywhere between 4772 AS to 4792 AS. Now that we have the timeline done, there's something we need to calculate. You see, a lot of people, myself included, realised that the statement of all hive wings can be traced back to clear sight meant that inbreeding must have happened. And safe to say, this immediately made everyone think that their genetics would be messed up, that they should have very weak immunities and should be more likely to have deformities. I will admit that before making this video, I also strongly believe this. But what if I told you that they could all still be traced back to clear sight, and the genetics might actually be fine? What we need to do is calculate roughly how many generations have passed before her descendants started marrying each other. Why are we doing this? Well, I did a little look into Google about inbreeding, and how many generations would need to pass for DNA from the original source to no longer be found. The answers I found were for humans, but they should give us at least an estimate to work with. Here are a few quotes. Based on a family tree, you are always genealogically related, but you may not be genetically related. After about eight generations, you have genetic material from fewer and fewer of your ancestors. After 16 generations, you only have DNA from about 2% of your ancestors and it keeps decreasing. Other answers have assumed that you get half of your DNA from each parent. Using that assumption, it only takes about 35 generations before there is no trace of your DNA. But that assumption is wrong for 50% of the population. However, as the generations go on, the chances are less and less that your descendants will carry your DNA. After 10 generations, you only carry the DNA of about half of your ancestors. After 20 generations, about 1 out of 1,000. After 30 generations, about 1 out of 500,000. So even after 30 generations, some of your descendants may carry your DNA, but it is unlikely. So from these quotes, we can gather that, for a human at least, 
It takes between 8 to 20 generations to lower the amount of the original DNA, and up to a good 30 to 35 generations to make the amount so small that it's basically disappeared, even though there will always be that tiny bit that would allow you to trace back your family tree. So with that in mind, we need to figure out what ages dragons in this world tend to start having eggs, so we can figure out how often a new generation is made. Looking at many of the families in Wings of Fire that have stated ages, it seems that dragons will on average start having eggs as early as the age of 10, and at the latest around the age of 20. Of course there are going to be outliers to this, however, these 10 years of the dragon's life seem to be the most likely time for them to start having families. With this, and the established timeline from earlier, we can use this to figure out a rough estimate for how many generations have passed within a certain time frame. First, we are going to use the 500 years from the split to present day as an example. I calculated a lower estimate for the generations by using an older age of 20. This gives us a minimum of 25 generations within the 500 years. I also did a middle estimate, going halfway between the ages at the age of 15. This gives us roughly 33 generations in the 500 years. And lastly, I did a higher estimate using the lowest age for the dragons to naturally start having families, that being 10 years old. This gives us a maximum of 50 generations within 500 years. Now that we have these numbers, we can find the average number of generations for this time frame by adding the results together and dividing by 3. This gives us an average of around 36 generations. Now we need to figure out when clear sight's descendants started marrying each other. From everything I've looked at, it feels like clear sight wouldn't have seen the creation of the hive wings in her visions. Those visions lasted 900 years and were last dated at the latest around the year 4000 AS. The tribal split didn't even happen until 500 years later in the year 4500 AS, so it was actually outside of her vision range. It's not clear at all if she saw her descendants start to marry together, but considering how it takes a good 30 generations for the original DNA to get small enough to be considered as good as gone, a minimum of 500 years needs to have passed after the last clutch of eggs that Clearsight would have had. Unfortunately, we don't know what age she stopped having eggs, but we do know that she lived for over 100 years. Even though it would be weird for her to have eggs that late in life, we are going to take the 100 years as the top estimate, and then use the 50 years as a more realistic top estimate. If she stopped having eggs around the age of 50, it would put us roughly in the year 3056 AS, giving us a time gap of 944 years until her last vision, and a gap of 1444 years until the tribal split. Now, when we remove the minimum 500 years to allow for enough generations to pass, it would leave us with an extra 444 years until the last vision, and also an extra 944 years until the tribal split. This actually leaves plenty of room for DNA from the beetle wings, and later on the silk wings, to expand the gene pool of clear sight's descendants to where it wouldn't cause many, if any, genetic problems. Even the higher estimate of 100 years is still safe, with there being an extra 394 years until the last vision, and an extra 894 years until the tribal split. Whether they started marrying each other within her vision range or not, so long as at least 500 years passed from the last clutch of eggs, then they would absolutely be genetically safe from having eggs of their own, avoiding the issue of having poor immunity and other genetic disorders. And don't forget, breeding between the Silkwings and the Hivewings wasn't outlawed until after a minimum of around 272 years after the tribal split, so the gene pool would still be getting fresh DNA up until that point. After all of that, the TLDR is that yes, Hivewings can still all be traced back to Clearsight, and are all still technically related to each other. However, we needed to look at how many generations can pass within a certain time, in order to find out that the creation of the Hivewings is actually possible without poor genetics. 
Hive wings are not as genetically unstable as we thought they were. I still think that they would be the most likely tribe to have problems. After all, there are three noted hive wings who need glasses, whereas I believe there is only one dragon in all of the other tribes who is stated to wear glasses, though I will admit that this isn't solid proof. But with all that said, I hope this clears up the big issue most people had with hive wings. It certainly did for me. And now I never want to do maths again for the entire year. Well, I suppose I had to put that science qualification to some use at some point. Thank you all for watching. And don't forget, breeding between silk wings and hive wings wasn't- ARE YOU KIDDING ME?!